<laughs> Hello. Uh, so today I'm doing a new uh, lightweight build. I've got uh, John coming round, and we're going to do a bit of work on some components I've never used before. So uh, this will be interesting. So this is a F3. Uh, flight controller, isn't it? Yeah, F3, it's 20 by 20. And then this is the OSD and VTX. Yes. So that'll let you switch your band and channel on the OSD as well as all the other stuff you'd normally expect. And, and that's, longer. is that your conversion board? It is, yeah. I think we we're going to want to find screws that are just a little bit longer for that. Yes, we will. Because that's not going to work. So let's do that. So that takes it from standard size, so it can fit on. Yeah, I'll go down for a these 30, standard pins. A thirty point five flight controller to a twenty by twenty. Yeah. Just take the ground pad off each side, and then it should just pull off. Just look closely and make sure that there's no connections on those trace, and you're fine. So what we've done is pulled off this spectrum. Port. I ain't going to be using this, so we can actually drop the FC uh, lower down, taking that off, making it even thinner. Well, this comes with male and female pins. You can do it with the plugs, yeah, and have the full set. So if you do, that will go in there, like that. Mm -hmm. And then our second board, we're definitely going to lose these anyway, so let's get rid of these. Nice. Our second board is going to sit like that to match up. So we can actually afford to just take a little bit more of those. We're going to use those as supports. In case something gets bent or broken. In fact, we can. These will be soldered to our transmitter. And the whole thing is going to sit together. Yeah, like that. That's why we, we could need that put, extra space. We could put um, another bolt on. We can, so we can make that. To bring that. Height we can up. make that bigger if you want to, or if you want, you can obviously just put those pins just in, put and solder pins them in. as oh, one okay, block. Yeah, if you be want. Better. So if you don't want to have the plugs, you can just solder them through. Yeah. Or if you want, obviously, you can wire it between there and then fold it back over if you think you need that access. But once you've put one of these together. You don't really need to get in there again, and if you do, it's not too difficult to just pull five solder pins out. Mm. So yeah, that is a crazy small, neat little stack. So that's F3 flight controller, it'll run 8K, it'll run d sharp 600, I think. Um, full PID tuning, uh, rates, VTX band and channel. We've got a plug to go straight off to the camera and a plug to go straight off to the LED strip. Really, everything you need in the middle of a quad. That is going to sit. So all we need to do now is perfectly. solder on our ESCs signal wires to this. Yes. To the FC. Going to give it a battery in that can come out underneath that plate. Full voltage in. Full voltage battery in. Yes. Yep. Cool. And whilst that's in situ there, whilst it's together. It's actually a lot easier to solder, solder those pins in place while it's jammed and straight. The other thing to consider at this point is whether your receiver will fit in that gap. Yeah. Nice. Tidy. <laughs> Utilise that space underneath there and stick the old receiver in. Happy days. So what I've done there is stuck in a uh, Runcam Swift Micro. Um, and I can just get some screws through the side here because the original HS 1177 uh, is mounted back here so I think I might just put some screws through the side and use this camera just to keep the weight down if you're using that VTX you've really got to stay with 25 milliwatts if you go to the illegal 200 milliwatts it's not gonna it's gonna draw too much power out of the back on the FC and it's gonna stop working so set it to 25 milliwatts as soon as you start and leave it there Let's see if we can show this on the camera, but we can't. There's three little tabs there. 
So you've got one, two, three. Soldering the left and the middle together will be for S bus. Soldering the middle and the right will be for CPPM. So I'm just going to do a, a little bit of a solder solder in here. That's how the pros do it. There we go. Just just a touch. Oh, these these pins go on. They go on the, the inside, very inside row. Yeah. To line okay. up with that, so I do that first. See now I'm getting on with it. In there. Okay, okay. Come on. There we go. Sweet. In that case, what we've already done is taken that choke off the end of that whip there. So that was a standard. That was a standard. Standard stubby. rubber ducky stubby do wobbly. And it's taken that out, which was on there. And then we're going to chop the top straight off this so that we don't need this anymore because they get crushed so easily. I'm going to make sure the exposed diameter is the same so a blade would be better for this than a set of clips. So I'm just going to match the performance of the one we had before. I would be much better off measuring this properly because this is only going to give me as good a performance as that rubber ducky would and they are fairly shoddily built. But once I've got this out of just needs to pull on. Out of case in strips. And now I need to just turn back a little bit of that outer casing as well. Because I'm gonna solder in. You can actually the buy these uh on Banggood, I think you get like five for like I don't know, quid or something. Yeah, absolutely. The they come as standard on a range of the little micro antennas. And then what we're going to do is pop that over there. And it'll probably be enough just to heat up that solder. So it's... Uh... Not as easy as it was first thought to be. But sometimes you just do it. Oh uh, yeah, all the time. So what it was, that bit that we pulled out, I should have had this whole length of insulation to turn back, and I didn't. It came off with the outer casing. So that normally I would ball it up into a big piece to mm -hmm. accept the solder. But that's on. Then you want to heat shrink that, and it's done. Sweet. Okay. So the frame that I chose is a uh, Bolt RC Kraken and as you can see the uh, arms are super thin on these so it's going to give some really good aerodynamics uh, when in flight. Obviously it's going to make it a lot more weaker but all I'm going to have to do is carry a whole bunch more arms. Um, I want to try and strip as much weight down on everything as possible and keep this super light. Hence the reason for going for this um, this, this flight controller, uh, the OSD and VTX all built into one little 20x20 20 20 board. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, the motors I'm going to use are some Gemfan 2700 KV, uh, 2205s. Uh, so 2700 kV should hopefully give me some decent top end. Now I could have easily went for an all-in-one uh, board for the ESCs, but I don't like the thought of the internal resistance and things um, happen that, 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 that they can potentially have. Plus there's going to be a, a pod uh, on top of this, which is going to stop the airflow getting to it. So what I've gone for is the um, Emacs Bullet. Now these are 30 amp and they're absolutely tiny. If we compare it to my... Uh, to my finger here uh, and they're only just a, a mil or so wide uh, wider if that than the arms themselves if it'll focus so uh, they're going to be perfect once I get them wrapped up they'll be uh, out the way uh, they're on the bottom so uh, reduce any prop strikes and things uh, and they should get a decent amount of airflow and with them being 30 amps uh, we should be good for um, any over amperage um, and internal resistance. Um, 
I'm going to stick the little uh, run cam in the front as well. Again, minimise that weight. Uh, this this all-in-one system is, is fantastic. You've got the uh, camera uh, plug in here, uh, and then it'll just come straight out through through the the onboard VTX. Uh, you can you can use normal antennas if you want to. This will just go on here, and we can just plug in a normal antenna. But as we are trying to save weight, we've just uh, whipped up a little whip using that uh, old uh, rubber ducky. And hopefully that should be just as good. Uh, so we save a few grams there and uh, plug that in like so and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we've got our motors mounted now and all of the ESCs on the back. Um, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this has turned out so far. As you can see, the ESCs are really just tucking behind um, the these very, very thin arms. Uh, next thing to do is to um, get the flight controller on and start soldering the... Uh, signal cables in. So we've got it built up, we've took the VTX off uh, just for the first power up, uh, just to make sure everything's safe. If I've done something wrong, at least we're not going to blow the VTX. That's just one thing we can save. And then we can just uh, plug it in and start messing with the OSD and things. Uh, apparently one of the first things you want to do is turn off or turn down the VTX power because it does come set to 200 milliwatts. Uh, so we'll go into the OSD and turn it down to 25 milliwatts because apparently uh, these don't last very long on 200 and 25 is all I ever use anyway and need all you're allowed to legally use and yes yes what he said <laughs> so let's power this up for the first time and see what goes on fire oh well that's good sweet okay get that receiver sorted out stick the VTX on so very important now before we power on is to have an antenna on so you want to take that UFL connector on and off as little as possible yeah because it gets slightly slightly loose every time and then you can just pinch it a little bit with a set of pliers but once it's on you really want to leave yeah. it there. yeah and channel search Right, that's good. There we go. So what we need to do is for that to go Front away. Front middle, your right, pitch form. And then we'll do that. And then I go up here, one up, one over, one down, one over, and then save. That's it. So as long as you do that process to start off with, that's now on 25 milliwatt and we're happy. And we should so that's on E1 else, we? while we're there. Let's put it on a race band. So I'm going to go up to... These two there, the VCX and the yeah. VCX channel, are the ones that aren't normally in race band one. So C is race band, is it? C is race band. Okay, and then save. So let's get that over on race band now. Search. It's really close, isn't it? There we go. There we go. Five, so six, six, five. If we go into that now, we've got... If we start on the first one, we've got PIDs on the first page. And VTX channel. And VCX and channels. Um, RC tuning on this one, so that's your expo, your rates and midpoints, as well as TPA. Next page, um, you can choose whether to display, which voltage is to display, um, how many cells you've got in your battery, whether you use virtual information from the FC. Then RSSI, if you've got the sensors for it, um, I generally leave that alone. Current, again, if you've got the sensors for it, or you can use a virtual sensor if you want which you can tune to to be right, um, or at least to land with the right amount of milliamps coming out of your battery. Um, we are... I'm going to have to pull this because I think the battery is dying. Let me just check. Okay. While we do, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to turn horizon off, sidebars off, scrolling bars off. I'm going to turn GPS coordinates off. Oh, no, we're good. Gimbal off, sensors off. Uh, so we're going to go to the next page. Units, metric is fine. Uh, signal is PAL is fine. We don't need to do any of the other stuff. That one at the bottom that says OSD TX channel, you should ignore. That's got nothing to do with your video. Um, again, we can ignore all of that because nobody cares. Um, if this... Can I, can I talk a second? So we've got the... So you want me to be quiet? Ah, oh, you fucker! <laughs> <laughs> So, you want me to stop talking at this stage? so you, yes. If you, you if you could just be quiet for a moment, please. Thank yeah, you very no much. Problem. Right. So starting as I was, now, yeah? yeah, starting right now. <laughs> so as I was saying, uh, about to say sorry, uh, we've done 
pretty much all the build. Now all I have to do is make some holes in this canopy and drill some holes for the uh, the camera and uh, yeah, make some holes in there too. And then we can sit that on, put some props on it and take it for its first test hover indoors. Unfortunately, it's a bit too dark and late at the moment to go outside and fly, so we'll save the flight for another day. So we've come to the park to test out the lightweight Kraken. We've got the two blades on there. Uh, focus, focus, there we go. And she's looking good. And the much lighter weight. Oh, no, uh, uh, yeah, well, obviously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use a 1500 just to get used to it, 1500, and then we'll do a super speed one on a 1395C formula. Uh, and see how she reacts. It'll stay super I don't think we're going to be uh, allowed here for very long. Does it look like it's shifting? It does. It does look like it's shifting. It's, do you know what though? It's actually quite hard to tell. It's, but you've got, you've got a dog after you now, right out in front of us in the middle. Hello. Uh, Give me a change of direct, a fast change of direction rather than um, just a straight line. Ooh, it's hard to tell. Yes, it's very, very fast. That's nah, just ridiculous. And a little bit of shake on that. Well, so you can probably uh, tune that to be a little faster. <laughs> I reckon the motors will be hotter than the ESCs. They're hardly trying. No? Nope. Still connected. And I love this, this is the fastest quad I've ever built. And then there's this. <laughs> <laughs> that way. Where are you headed? Right, just around those trees, yeah? Yeah, so that, that really is a little porthole to the outside, isn't it? That plastic window. Oh, oh God. This needs a steeper camera angle. Do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, because I can see that you're having to it's so quick. Oh, well, did that tree go? <laughs> it's so quick that when you want to dart out of something, you, you're Hanging. having to dip it quite a lot, aren't you? So you're looking up at the top of the screen a lot. I bet if you, even if you give it full beam, you can't still see where you're headed. That was full then. 
I think it's about right. Okay. That change of direction is really rapid. Yeah, it's actually just the just the altitude increase when you do fast turns, that's slight out, but you'll get, that's probably more to do with the weight of the quad than the camera angle, you're just not expecting it to sit up as much as it does. Hey guys, so as you've seen from that footage, the uh, Kraken is incredibly fast. Um, I did start having an issue with the uh, ESCs, uh, or it could be the flight controller, I don't know, we're going to figure that out, uh, but basically the quad dropped out the sky, and um, uh, once I've got that sorted anyway I'm going to go out and get some practice on it because I had hoped to use it in some of the uh, larger uh, outdoor courses. Um, it is absolutely rapid, it's an incredible machine, it's cutting through the air like butter, uh, oh, sorry a hot knife through butter um, and it's very enjoyable to fly. So uh, yeah project super lightweight um, streamlined quad uh, I think is a su success so, so, so far. And the all weight was 245 grams with the props. Um, God knows what the speed is on it, I don't know. Um, I, I think if I stick a, a GPS uh, unit on there to measure it, then it's really going to um, uh, cripple it. But uh, maybe if I can get hold of one, we'll, we'll see, or we can try and measure it some other way. But uh, yeah, great success with the Kraken, and I can't wait to get out. Sorry this video is a little bit long. Um, it's not like any video I've kind of done before, uh, just because it's simply cut and things like that. But um, I just wanted to share an experience uh, of building a super lightweight quad with uh, all-in-one um, flight controller, OSD, VTX, blah, blah, blah. And the problem with the Kraken is once you put that dome on the top, you can't get in there to change channels and things. So doing it through the VTX, uh, through, uh, through the goggles, uh, it's fantastic uh, for me, it means I don't have to take the pod off all the time. Uh, the homemade whip antenna, as you've seen, worked really well uh, too, so that was a su uh, surprise and it was very easy to make. So uh, that's it guys, uh, thank you for watching if you have managed to watch all the way to here and uh, stay tuned because there's plenty more to come. Okay.